In my previous video, I explained why I used uh, Photoshop to edit images rather than Lightroom when using the Nick collection. It appeared to go down well, and it sparked a few questions, but there's also a few misunderstandings, so I want to demonstrate exactly how I do this. So here we are in Lightroom first off, and I've selected my image that I'm going to edit. I'm just going to go quickly over to the Develop module and make some changes to this. So I'll start with the camera calibration, and I'll go to a standard calibration because I like that better with this image. And I'm going to, first off, increase the shadows to open those up a little bit. I'm going to increase the clarity a little bit. I'm going to warm the image very slightly, and I'll increase the vibrance as well. Um, I'm going to just increase the exposure, but I'm going to reduce the highlights to stop it blowing out any uh, areas of the image. And I'll also just add some effects in terms of a very subtle vignette. And I'll just add in a little bit of the dehaze, because I actually like that on some of these landscape images. OK, so that's my edits done in Lightroom. I'm now going to right click and select the Edit In option. Now I've got Photoshop installed on here, so if you've, see, if you've got Photoshop you should see it appear as a, an editor. But I'm not going to use this top option, I'm going to come down here to the bottom and I have the option to open the image as a smart object in Photoshop. Now I'm going to select that and immediately I flip over to Photoshop and the image starts to open. Now it takes it a few minutes, it's a very large image and it actually adds a little bit of processing time because you're using smart objects. If you look over here in my uh, layers panel, you'll see the image loaded. You'll see that it's coming up as a smart object thumbnail when I hover over it. And there's also this little symbol down in the bottom right hand corner that indicates this is a smart object. Now, when I work on this with the Nick collection, so we'll, we'll call it Viveza, you immediately get the warning that Viveza has identified this is a smart object. And it's just warning you that it will store the image in a slightly different way. But don't worry about it, just carry on. Now we'll open up the shadows globally in that. We'll add a little bit more contrast. We'll add in some structure. I'll add a selective adjustment to some of the areas where we are slightly wanting to warm up the image slightly. Um, add in some contrast and some saturation as well. We'll also add a little bit more of a selection onto the leaves just to add some contrast and make those stand out a little bit more. Add a bit of structure. And finally, we'll just select the water down at the bottom, add in some contrast, add in some saturation there. And let's say that's the image done. I can now click OK. And the the Vaser filter is now applied, but it's applied as a smart object. That means if I open this layer again in the window, I can actually re-edit my image and make further adjustments. So all the options are saved inside the image. The other thing I can do, though, is I can add further uh, adjustment filters. So let's now drop into Color Effects Pro for this. It's tried to add a new layer, but in a moment it will detect that it's a smart object and so it will add the effect onto the smart object that we've already created. So here we are we can use the dynamic contrast to add contrast but open the shadows at the same time. If we wanted to we could add some color correction but to be honest I quite like the image the way it is. We could add in other filters here such as the detail extractor uh, which would really pull out the detail but we don't want too much of that. Um, you can also increase the contrast if you wish and just do a quick comparison. Yep, happy with that. And now I can click OK. OK, back in Photoshop now and you can see that we've got both the color effects and the Viveza smart objects down here. If we double click on one of those it will reopen 
the filter and allow us to make further changes. The next bit though is now to save this. So all we have to do is do file save and what that will do is it will save the image back into the Lightroom area where the original raw file was created. Now sorry I should have stressed earlier I am working on raw files here rather than JPEGs. That's the image saved. We can now skip back into Lightroom and we can see immediately down here in the film strip we're now looking at one of two images. What we've got here is the original raw file with the adjustments applied. You can see the file name here and we've got then the second image which was the one we've just created and saved and it's automatically been saved back into Lightroom it's been added to the catalogue, it's in the same destination as the original and it appears now in an image stack. So I can now collapse the images or I can expand it to see both of the images. The reason it's added it automatically to the stack is in my preferences I actually have the option for the adding of the image into a stack automatically. If you want to check whether or not you have the option ticked in your Lightroom Go into your external editing and look for this option down here, stack with the original. That means that every time you create an image copy, it will stack it with the original automatically, creating these groupings that you see. If you wanted to unstack an image, you'd simply right click, look at the stacking option and click unstack or remove from stack. Hope you find that interesting and I hope it answers some of the questions and clears up some of the misunderstanding that people may have had from my other video. Thanks for watching, hope to see you again soon.